Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at the HG Amplified IMGN or Amplified Imagine Ryujin Maru from Wataru. As usual, this video right here would not have been possible without those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you do want one of these of your own, link is down there in the description. Now, before we get into it, there's a lot going on with this box that needs a little bit of an explanation. In case you don't know about Machine Hero Wataru, that is the anime that this right here is from. It's been going since 1988. There was a recent series on the Gundam Info YouTube channel if you want to watch something a little bit more modern and get the gist about this particular robot right here. But the most interesting aspect about it is the HG Amplified Imagine written on the box. So just like we would have seen with the Digimon Amplified kits, this has been amplified. As in, this right here is Ryujin Maru. Well, that's a small little chibi style robot right there. They've unchibified it. The potential for this line is massive. Think of your favorite BB Senshi or SD Gundam, like the Night Gundam right here. That, in full size, like we've seen with some figures before, could be a model kit potential. What would you like to see amplified by Bandai? Drop it down there in the comments and let's get right into this. Also, I will mention that, remember that Frosty Cat review I did not that long ago? It's like a almost perfect grade size and quality kit that's absolutely mind-blowing. Well, that's also Ryuji and Maru. Someone mentioned it in the comments and it is the case. It's the Byako version of this particular robot. So if you want an over-the-top version of Yuji Maru, that's available too. So straight away on cracking this box open, there's some really interesting aspects. So. There's a lot of non-usual high-grade kind of stuff going on in here. First off, we've got some plated parts. So these are pretty much sprayed in a chrome, then followed up with a clear yellow for an absolutely fantastic gold right out of the box. This is no injection gold, and it's almost two-toned the way it's got some recessed parts that still show some of the silver that is in under that. So we've got two runners of this particular finish, including the sword. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this turns out. Next up in here, I'm seeing another unique addition. This right here is what's referred to by Bandai as a jewel seal or jewel sticker. So on actually getting that out of the box, you'll see that this is a three-dimensional sticker. Now we've seen these before on Bandai kits, but they're not usual. So this is three-dimensional, which means it catches the light in a nicer way than your usual foil sticker. That's cool. Also, I will mention while I'm right here, this particular runner is in a super, super high gloss finish. So that will go really nice with the gold over here. In the next bag, then we've got some semi-gloss blue. Once again, they're mixing up the textures inside of this pack really well in the finishes. And we've got another one of these dual stickers, a little bit smaller. So inside the next bag, then we've got the gray plastic, which I'd almost say is kind of standard compared to what we saw so far, and a little shield of stickers. But actually saying this is similar to, or well, kind of basic compared to what we've seen in the box so far, that is a bit of an understatement. The molding on these parts is absolutely incredible. It's so perfect. This is some crazy standard for high grade. But then again, Bandai has been blowing kits out of the park with the Kyokai Senki line lately, so this is cool. Also worth noting that the only color correcting stickers inside of this box are for the eyes and what I can assume is a head camera. So no colors, just something that can't really be done in plastic. On to the last box then, and we've got some interesting aspects in here as well. First off, the A runner like we usually see in a Bandai kit is multicolored. Gloss white, some gray that matches the gray from before. We've got some clear green for the eyes. So it seems like you have a choice here with the eye stickers or no sticker. And finally, we do have this right here, which is a metallic injection red, which actually, to be honest, looks pretty cool. I can't wait to see that paired up with the gold and other colors. What we've also gotten here is another sheet of those little jewel stickers, this time a little bit smaller. And finally, this right here, which is something I have not seen since the Master Grade Age 1 normal. Something that I love a lot and just kind of, just kind of flew away. All right, anyway, I picked it up. It's a little bit dusty now, but what this is right here is something extremely interesting. This is pretty much a sticky plastic veneer. This is not a sticker. It's thick and plastic and a sticker. So yeah, veneer is the best way to put it. We'll check out how this sticks on now in the build. So one thing I will mention about this build is I did find one or two very hefty gates on some of the shiny parts. Now, 
In general, with white parts, this isn't that big of a deal. You just snip it off and then you can sand the surface and then you can't see anything. But because this is high gloss, that means if you sand the surface, you will damage the glossy surface. Now, what I recommend here is to use the Racer Pro by Gun Primer. That will clean it up absolutely perfect. Then hit it with the white balancer, the gray side, then the white side. And that will make sure that this part retains its fully gloss perfect finish. This works every time. And if you want one, link in the description. So when it comes to the build of this kit, it is not your classic high grade without a doubt. There's so much going on here, a lot of nice layering. For the most part, excluding the arms, it pretty much has a whole inner frame. And the quality is just off the charts. Now what I mentioned there is quite interesting, it's almost got a full inner frame besides the arms, and usually when it comes to a kit, the most building that you'll do is in the legs, but the legs are quite simple here, but yet, it's a great build. The most building you have is the shoulders and arms. There's so much going on, so many parts, this build is crazy. Other elements like the way the torso layers up, and eventually we've got those individual magatama around the neck. There's so much this detail where it needs to be, and then where it doesn't, the parts are a little bit, well, big. So as for the stickers that we have in here, first off, we've got those jewel stickers. Those just work like regular stickers, and they attach onto multiple places, just like the inside of the chest, and mainly around the belt. By the way, you've got a plus 10 accuracy bonus if you're getting watched by a pupper. The second style of sticker that we have in here is the standard eye sticker that just pops onto the eyes in this way right here. But I will mention that there is fully color accurate, well, semi, I should say, color accurate parts underneath. It's all in green, but there is no black border on these. And that's pretty easy to do. Just paint the whole thing black and then file off the tops of the eyes and you've got yourself some perfect eyes straight away. Lastly then, and something I was a little bit disappointed by, it was the plastic style stickers. These are quite easy to attach, but I will mention they're ever so slightly too long, so they won't always rest perfectly. But I'll talk about that a little bit more when we're actually taking a look at the sword itself. But yeah, on the whole, this builds up really well. Any little nubs we have left over from the gold parts well, because you can't actually clean up the gold parts, if you snip something off its paint, the paint will be damaged if you try to do any more. Well, there is one critical issue with those I'll talk about later on, but besides that, it works fine. The rest of the assembly here is simple, effective, and feels great. Now let's get it finally stuck together and see what this looks like in the end. So now jump into the aesthetics with that full 360 degree spin and this is 100% Ryujin Maru amplified in more than one way. The full proportions and silhouette here is really cool. This thing is big, bulky, has that narrow waist to massive shoulder kind of Mr. Olympia kind of proportions. This thing's big. On top of that, Bandai have really come with a multifaceted approach to how this looks. We've got that plated gold on top of that metallic injection red, almost matte blue, a semi-gloss kind of matte gray, that super shiny high gloss white, and then we've got those jewel stickers on the belt and inside of the chest. There is so much going on here, so I'm gonna just cut through it all, zoom in, and talk about the ins and outs of this thing. I will mention I did panel line it a little bit too. So when it comes to this kit, there's only one thing and one thing only that is a bit of a letdown for me. All the colors are absolutely perfect, besides one little downfall. That is, for the most part, the gold on this is undergated. Because it is painted, if you cut off a knob, you'll destroy the paint and damage the area around it, and you can't really do any filing or anything like that to clean it up, or you'll damage the paint more. So for the most part, all the knobs are underneath the surface where you cannot see them, so that means the damage cannot be seen. Except for one part where it really does stand out, and that is on these spikes on the ankles. You could try to clean these up, but no matter what you do, you're gonna damage the surface more. So unless you can match the gold with paint, there's no way really around this. However, besides that, this kit brings in a lot of what Bandai can do aesthetically in bucket loads. The color accuracy here, for the most part, from what we can see, is pretty much perfect. The only thing that requires stickers is the eyes, which in a way is an option because they are green underneath. The silhouette and the proportions here are crazy. The angles on the white parts look phenomenal. The nice raised and lowered parts all over the blue segments make it look even more paneled and separated than it actually is. And I'm blown away by those dragons up on the shoulders. Those look phenomenal against the metallic red underneath. 
Like I mentioned, there isn't really any stickers involved in this at all besides the ones right there on the belt. Those are more so to get something that Bandai can't really do in plastic per se without adding colored parts coming through from the other side. But this is a happy medium. We've got some panel lining details here and there, these little notch or line segments to break up the wide areas of white. I did panel line them using the standard panel lining marker. And we do have some nice little segments you can highlight as well all over the armor here and there to give it a much more three-dimensional look. When it comes to other aspects like seams and molds, for the most part, I'm not really seeing any per se. Definitely nothing not connecting together, so I don't see any seams that need closing. And there's no mold lines that are really cropping up anywhere that I can see. There's no weird aspects like hollow parts or anything like that, but we do have some incredible detailing. We've got some nice layering, the parts from underneath coming through like in the front of the leg there. Inside of the chest, we've got a jewel sticker inside the chest as well you can barely see. And those Magatama up on the neck are incredible. Those are each a separate part that you put on piece by piece. And the same goes for those four gray segments on the chest as well. This thing is phenomenal. Even around back, we've got a little bit of gold coming through from underneath as well. This thing looks astounding. So when it comes to the height of this, you might be a little bit surprised. It says high grade on the box, but when you slap down a typical size Gundam high grade, this is a whole lot bigger and a whole lot more detailed. Grab in a master grade for comparison as well. And as you can see, it's more akin to the size of a master grade than a high grade, just a little bit shy of that master grade height. So when it comes to the hands in here, these are quite interesting because they border on, and actually they kind of are, master grade style hands. Now we saw something like this before, I'm pretty sure, with the high grade Messer, but it's still pretty cool to see. So with the hand right here, we do have one little ball joint so you can move the thumb around. Once again, kind of like a master grade like we would have seen in, say, Seed or Gundam Wing. So you've popped this off, we've got swappable style fingers, and as for the options in here, it's the widespread ones we've been looking at throughout the review so far and oddly enough just ones for holding on to weapons now i guess these could be used as impromptu fists if you wanted to but what this does mean is we don't have anything like a fist for using in this kit so now moving on to the weapons and the first is a pair of claws that we can attach onto the arms now these are pretty cool first off they're spending most of their time on ryujin maru here up on his shoulders you can just pop these off like so and we also have an alternate pair of claw segments which aren't curled like these ones right here. So some straight out stab and claws. That as well as some adapter parts. So you just swap the straight claws with the ones that were curled, attach the adapter in like so, and you're ready to go. To attach on the claws, you just attach them via the adapter that you attached onto the inside of them, onto the rear of the forearms like so. They attach on easy, these will not fall off, and they look astounding. These look really, really, really cool. There it is in a couple of poses so you can see exactly what Ryujin Maro will look like when equipped with the claws. Now that's enough about them. Let's check out the main event, the Soaring Dragon Sword. So there we have the Soaring Dragon Sword. So this is actually a little bit of a disappointment to me. So plastic wise, we've got the red down there in the hilt as well as the nice gold on the blade. But what actually has got me a little bit down is the fact that the sticker didn't actually work out the way I'd hoped it would. So as you can see right here, the end of the sticker just is not lining up. That's because I lined it up with this end and that worked out fine. I thought maybe it was something I did wrong. So when I actually jumped onto this side, I lined it up with this end here. And I guess to my shock, when I got to this end right here, it did not line up and it is overlapping ever so slightly. So the sticker is actually mildly too long by like half a millimeter or something. And that means it doesn't line up entirely with the design on here, which is a little bit disappointing. There is some good news, however, attaching this into the hand is super simple. You just pop off the fingers. The handle of the sword actually fits flush, so it's not gonna fall out of these fingers while you're trying to reattach them. And once they are attached, this holds on rock solid. We've got a little bit of back wear in here as well, which is this adapter or backpack segment, which attaches onto the back for storing the sword when it's not in use. So getting Ryu Jinmaru into a pose with the sword is quite easy. Now I will mention, even though it's not the articulation part yet, that 
The articulation is a little bit limited, not a whole lot. We can actually get some decent poses. Again, this kid clamps onto that sword so it's not going to drop it, and that right there is what it would look like in a pose holding onto the sword. Now, we'll mention after looking at the sword for quite some time, I've noticed that the metallic injection red and the gold and the plasticky black sticker don't really gel together that well in the same sort of classy finish that the robot itself has. It looks kind of toyish. Maybe with a little bit of pen lining or something like that, this might look a little bit better. But compared to the actual robot itself, this isn't exactly as nice. So when the sword is not in use, we'll flip around to where we attached that backpack on a little while ago. And you just remove this red segment. The sword slots in utterly and perfectly flush. And then you pop the red part back on and there it is stored around back, ready to be grabbed at Ryujin Maru's leisure. Last of them, we've got an action-based adapter, which is again a very kind of master grade aspect of this particular kit. You just attach it onto the crotch just like so, it holds on okay, make sure it clicks. Grab yourself an action base, this is an action base 4 I believe, just attach him on just like so. And I will mention, this does look great in a flying pose, it does a hold on quite well, but I will mention, give this any kind of knock if it's on your shelf or anything, it does have the chance of tumbling off, could be a bit more secure. So now jump in onto the articulation and first off the usual comment on the build strength. Now I've had the waist pop a couple of times while just holding on. Maybe when you move this quite a bit it'll eventually work its way out and I've had him just kind of drop while holding it. Besides that though I haven't found any particular issues. Can kind of leverage off the top of the head by accident easily but besides that all good. We've got that giggity 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 goo neck so that is a hinge down below and a ball up top so this can give you quite a bit of movement even though it's got that collar that can block the head when it's down in that position for the most part you'll get most poses that you're looking for. One pretty cool aspect here is all of these are well two of each not the middle one are actually articulated they're on a peg so they can move up and down so you can get a little bit out of those if you want it to be more dynamic. As for the shoulder here, it can only move towards the front. We don't have anything towards the back, so that can limit that a little bit. You got a little bit to give it a tiny bit of angle, barely, not even. And forward and back is it. Besides that, then we've got the full 360 spin. A little bit of an armor flap here. Let's see what we can get all the way up. So that is it, just about parallel to the ground, which is pretty good. Full three, well, full 360 degree spin at both the upper arm and the lower arm. So these are separated. I will mention that the elbow joint is double jointed and it's double jointed either side of this rotation. So once this is rotated, you'll kind of get a bit of a clash there. If you want to bend the actual elbow itself, you need to bring this around to the front and then you get the full double bend, which gets you quite a bit. Down then at the wrist, it is your typical ball joint. This can come loose if you move it around an awful lot. It can pop out. And we do have a finger bend as well at the thumb. The ab crunch is a little bit limited. It's mainly just what you're seeing right here. That and a ball joint below, which can be a little bit, well, like I said before, make it a little loose. Side to side, we've got a bit. So the torso in general is a little bit on the limited side. Full spin though. As for the skirting armors, we've got side skirtings here. They can move back and forward. These pop a little bit too. So any of the ball joints on this seem to be quite loose. So mainly it can go back and forward. You can get into a position and it will stay. It's just when you're moving it, it is prone to popping a little bit. It actually likes to move with the leg. Speaking of the legs, there is no dropping motion inside of the hip or anything. It's just a simple kick up to the front and kick out to the back. A bit limited to the back. Just going to move both of these to test out the splits because they will drop off. It can splits with those off. Pop one on, you can raise it to about that point. So you're going to get maybe that with them attached. We've got that full 360 spin at the upper leg. Actually, it gets a little bit blocked because of the front armor lip. With the leg off, there is the knee bend. We've got a nice kind of recessing bit of plastic here when it actually goes up like so. So that is nice. Down here we do have a moving flappy flappy right here. And finally then with the foot on the ground to test that functional movement. There it is all the way to the back which is incredibly nice without raising the foot off the ground. There it is all the way to the front which is very nice too. We've got that little part that moves inside of the foot. And then we've got the side to side pivot which is incredible. So you're going to get some dynamic poses out of that. And you don't have a dropping toe but the foot does drop quite a bit for nice aerial poses. 
So when it comes to the articulation in here, we do have some limitations as well as some loose parts. The loose parts are the side skirting armors. They like to pop quite a bit as well as the waist. Actually, the waist so much that I actually had a full waist blowout while getting this into the usual test pose. And I had to actually reassemble that little part again. Besides that though, the limitations on movement are the upper waist hip area, mainly because those skirtings do get in the way and the fact that we do have a bit of a lacking ab crunch. Besides that, we've got some great ankles, great knees, nice shoulders, great elbows, and a nice neck too. So limited in some aspects, loose in some places, but it seems like this is mainly a kit for the look, not necessarily for all of the poses, but it has those in bucket loads too. So anyway, that right there is it for the review and the high grade Amplified Imagine Ryujin Maru gets platinum tier from me. This is a crazy awesome kit that does a crazy awesome amount of stuff. This does feel somewhere between a high grade and a master grade. The price point at 5,500 yen definitely puts it closer to a master grade, but you can kind of see where that comes from. The painted parts inside the box definitely feel premium. They lots of different plastics. Some of them actually resemble that of a high resolution kit. The whites in here definitely are exactly the same sort of kind of brittle, super gloss white we would have seen in those kits. This is out and out a looker. The only reason this wouldn't have made its way to Gundarium tier is the fact that it is loose in some regards and is a little bit limited when it comes to some of the poses. That and the sword could look a little bit better. But if you love Machine Hero Wataru, if you just really like Ryujin Maru and always want to see what it would look like as a, well, full proportioned robot, then this is definitely for you. If you want to see Bandai expand on this line, then buy the absolute hell out of it, because I want to see some SD Gundams getting this amplified treatment. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Want one of your own? Link to Hobby Link down there in the description. And as always, I will see you next time. As always, this video and every video would not be possible without each and every one of you guys who watches my videos. And special thanks to those of you who are supporting me over on Patreon and on the channel members, including Caleb Engelhart, Global Frequency Studios, Go Little Rockstar, Gunply UK Limited, Joe, Kill Me Inc, Lawrence Seahack, RG59061, and Van Fawn.